Hey guys, myself Rakesh and I welcome you back to Expo Hub channel. I have a question for you. If I open the config file from RE framework and if I ask you what is the use of max consecutive system exceptions? What is the use of it? Okay. And this max consecutive system exception is also part of your RE framework. Do you know where it is? All you have to do is hit on the initialization block. Okay. And try to minimize everything the moment you get in. And we are going to slowly expand one by one. Let's minimize. So here, once you minimize everything, you'll be able to see there is also a block. There is an if condition. Okay. This is the if condition. If you expand this, this is where this max consecutive system exception has been used. So what is the use of it? Do you know? And this plays a very, very important role, which I'm going to explain. And knowing this for one time is very, very important because you have to understand why this is used and what is the use of this max consecutive system exceptions. Okay. So let me start explaining you. Once I explain, it will be very, very clear what is the use of it. Okay, now to explain you, let me give you a question. Okay, through an example, we are going to understand. Let's say if I ask you, you are working with a customer and you are creating a project for him. In that project, it's going to process several data. So the client says, while you are processing the data, if there are any kind of system exceptions, that means, let's say you are working on a banking client and while you are processing the data the banking client says while you are applying the data or while you are processing the data in our system in case the application does not respond or the the process could not be it could not be done because the application is not responding and there is a system exception in such a case you should immediately stop the process okay or maybe some other client says if there are while processing the data, if there are more than five system exceptions, if there are five system exceptions, you should stop it. You should not continue processing the data anymore. Or if there are more than two exceptions, you should stop it. So if such conditions comes, you have to play with the max consecutive system exceptions. So what happens? Let's say if I'm going to say one, that means the moment there is one system exception while you are processing the data through RE framework, if there is one system exception, one, if there is one system exception, the process would immediately get into the end process. It is going to stop. If I am putting two, meaning if there are two system exceptions while processing the data, it is going to get onto the end process state. If I keep it to zero, that means you are disabling the feature. If you are keeping it to zero, if you read this, to disable this feature, set this value to zero. Zero means if there are, it does not matter how many system exceptions are coming, it is going to just continue the as usual process of retrying all the applications and trying to, it is going to continue the loop. Doesn't matter how many system exceptions has occurred. 5, 10, 12, doesn't matter, it should retry. So in such a case, if you do not want to use it, you need to keep it as zero. If you want to stop the process at every, if there is five system exceptions, you want to stop it, then you have to set the value to five and save it. The moment you do this, what would happen while processing the data? If there are five system exceptions, it is going to get into the end process state. So, uh, you know, what is the use of it? We understood. What is the use of it? We understood. But how this logic works, you need to have a clear cut idea as a developer. You must have a clear cut idea as to how this is working Rakesh. We understood what is the use of it. Okay. If I have to stop the entire process after five consecutive system exceptions, then I have to set the value to five. If I have to stop it after one consecutive system exception, I have to write it as one. If it is two, that means two system consecutive exceptions are allowed. So this much we have understood. Okay. Now how this works is as a developer, we have to have a proper knowledge. So I am going to explain you. Okay. So I am on the RE framework initialization block. First of all, let's expand it. Okay. And try to minimize all other things that you don't want to read now. So minimize, for example, this I have minimized. So I am in the if 
factivity. This is the E factivity used for max consecutive system exceptions. So the use of it we have understood. So first of all, you should read the description carefully. If max consecutive system exception number was reached, let's say I am mentioning 5. If it has reached 5, it throws an exception at the initialization. So look at this inside the if condition they are using a throw activity. So this is going to throw an error. The moment it throws an error after 5 consecutive system exceptions or 2, whatever the numbers are, the moment it throws, where we are? We are inside a try block, right? So if this activity is throwing an error, what would happen? It is going to be caught by the catch section. The moment it is caught by the catch section, what happens? Here we have the assigned system exception. System exception is equal to exception. And as per the transition, if there is a system exception, it is going to get onto the end process state. Okay, that is very, very well defined here. If you click over here, system exception is nothing, then it goes to get transaction data. If system exception is something is there, then it is going to get onto the end process. So it is already clearly defined. Okay, so let me come out of this. So this much we have understood. If there is an exception after five consecutive system um, you know, if there are five consecutive system exceptions thrown, what happens? The, and the block is going to drive this. It is going to throw the exception and will be caught by this catch section and it is going to drive the entire flow to the end process state. So this much we have understood. Now how this works, we have to understand. Okay. So first of all, let's expand this if max consecutive system exception exceeded if condition. Okay. Now let's read it. What they are doing over here, let me put it in a bigger window so that it is easy to read. Okay, now let's expand it. Hope you guys can see it. Now look at this. What they are doing, they are trying to, this is the dictionary variable config max consecutive system exception. This is the key, key and the if I am mentioning config underscore this, that means Whatever the value we have mentioned in the config file, let's say it, if I am mentioning 2, we'll take the example of 2, let's say, okay. So let's say 2 is greater than 0. So this condition is met. It is converting the string format to integer format. So 2 is greater than 0. This is met because here in my config file, I want the entire process to stop after two consecutive system exceptions. If there are two, if there are two system exceptions, third time it should not process, it should stop the entire process. So I mentioned here 2. Okay. So this we have understood. So here what is happening? This is true. Max consecutive number is greater than 0. So this is true. And also consecutive system exception. What is this consecutive system exception? This is another integer variable. Let me show you that. Okay. Let's go to the video. This is a very simple integer variable whose name is consecutive system exception just an integer variable whose default value is given 0 okay now let's read it so this is a variable we understood now let's read it so if the so right now the value is 0 if 0 is greater than equals to max so what is the max consecutive value 2 i have given in our example i have set it as 2 so here 0 greater than or equals to 2 no this is also not correct so this if condition is not going to work for the very first time when you are starting the process so the, for the very first time it's not going to run let's say you know the initial initialization block has started it got the transaction and here in the process transaction it has started processing the data while processing the data remember while processing the data, there is a system exception. While processing the data, there is a system exception. So what would happen? Let me show you. The consecutive exception, that variable, right? They have used a counter to increase the value. So let me show you that. So here I am in the process transaction. So let me go to the try block. So here it is trying, yeah, it is trying to process the data. And while processing the data, you know, there is a system exception. So if there is a system exception, which section will work? It will come to the catch and then it will go to this block exception, system exception block. The moment it goes inside this block, what do you see? This exception block is a, again has set of activities. And the important activity here is 
invoke set transaction status invoke set transaction status so it, it is calling this workflow let's open this workflow okay and remember this workflow is called three times in the process transaction state okay i'm going to show you that but let's focus on this activity uh, this workflow so here if there is a system exception it is going to come over here system exception now let's expand the system exception scroll down down and here you would find they have used a simple assign activity and the assign activity what they are doing they are increasing this consecutive system exception variable plus one so the initial value was zero now it will become one so this consecutive value if we, if i go back to the main workflow the consecutive value has become one so what would happen it will come over here now the value is one right now it will come to the init block and in the init block again it will do all these things you know uh, config file it won't read because it is not for the very first time so it will come over here the moment it comes over here right here it will check what is the condition been given for this if activity the condition given is consecutive system exception so this is anyways true is greater than zero because we have mentioned two and the value of the consecutive system exception now is one zero plus one one so one greater than equals to this one this is not yet met because the max consecutive value is two so understand if the same error happens once again what would happen the consecutive value would become two this time because it is two because one more consecutive system exception has occurred because of that what would happen the consecutive system exception value would become two so two greater than or equal to so two is equal to two the moment the entire condition is met what would happen the throw activity is going to run because it's a simple if activity so if the condition is met then it's going to work the moment it throws the consecutive exception what would happen this will be caught by let me minimize the moment the exception is thrown it will be caught by this exception block and this exception block is going to assign a value to system exception variable because it is assigning a value to system exception variable if you go over here what would happen the system exception is not nothing that means there is a value to it the moment there is a value to it so as per the definition is going to get on to the end process state so while we are working on the state you know we have already defined in this state that if the value is not nothing then it should go to end process state okay so that way your my entire workflow is going to stop so this much we have clearly understood one more thing i was saying the set transaction status right when i go to the process transaction state let's open the try block so while i'm processing the data what can happen while i'm processing the data it could be successful if it is successful then it's supposed to set the value so they are calling this set transaction status workflow this is first time they are calling if there is a business rule exception if there is a business rule exception again in the business rule exception i have to set the status as bre right business rule exception so again they are calling the same workflow and the third place where they are calling is system exception if the system exception again they have to call so again here in the system exception part they are calling the set transaction status exception so in the process transaction state i am using this workflow three times okay this is also one of the knowledge that you can gain from this video so thank you guys uh, i hope uh, this must be now very clear as to if you want to disable you have to keep it to zero remember if you are setting some value it is going to operate in that way if i'm setting the value if i say if i value 10 what is the meaning of this that means on 10th system consecutive exceptions continue consecutive means one after the other if there is consecutive i mean it has happened uh, while you are processing the data it happened 10 times so if it is 10 time then it is going to end the process max allowed value is 10 okay so hope you guys must have got a clear cut knowledge around this so thank you very much for watching it we are going to come up with more such interesting and conceptual videos which are going to help the rpa developers or anyone who is wanted to have a in depth knowledge and anyone who is trying to go for an interview or maybe you are trying to go for a advanced RPA certification. It's going to help you. So thank you guys for watching it. We are going to meet again in our next content. Take care. Bye-bye.